Uh, some of you have, uh, who has received the Erasmus Plus grant in this room? Okay, one. Okay, as you see, actually, uh, uh, yeah, the Iceland, Iceland, yes. So, uh, well, actually we have been facing this challenge because uh, before Erasmus Plus, there were uh, individual grants, Comenius Grundtvig grants, where teachers could individually apply, which was easier because then they could uh, fill out the application themselves and they could choose the, the training they want to attend. But now it goes through the schools, which means that the teacher should promote the course or the area that wants to be trained, and then the school has the say if they want to uh, submit an application or not. So I've already heard from, uh, for example, uh, I think it was Luis, or uh, yes, that the school uh, was not interested, for example, in history, because he was the only one who, um, who wanted to, to, to attend our conference. So that, that is, uh, that's a challenge. So that's why um, we want to actually uh, activate our members to be more active in uh, including our courses in, in the field areas. Uh, so another uh, part of this key action one is that, uh, for example, staff members of the associations can also get training, can apply, and can get trained in the areas they want. For example, we as Europea also received a grant to, to attend the trainings, uh, to develop ourselves, our capacities on the project acquisition, on lobby of different areas, and also go and attend, uh, go and train our members. For example, the open session we had here was also supported by uh, Erasmus Plus program within this action. Uh, and there's also key action two, uh, which is uh, actually uh, very relevant for the uh, strategic partnerships. Actually, a part of it is also big project, <laughs> to say it. Uh, so this requires a lot of, uh, like there's like, I don't know, 45 page project application that I think Rita, mentioned that she uh, she's here, Lita. I suppose you said that you some you applied recently for key action to project which and Edgar is a partner. So it means there is there is a possibility to to and also we as Europe Leo, um, we are we are also attending this uh, this part of the program and we are open for partnerships. So whenever you need a support we are ready to help. And cash is free. I'm not going to talk too much about it because it's more about policy um, making and um, so we can, it's not very relevant. Um, so uh, the new cat, there is a new uh, toolkit which is the, um, well actually not a toolkit, it's a catalog. But when there was a Comedians and Group of Grants, uh, there was a catalog so it was easy to find courses. But when Rasmus Plus program was introduced, uh, there was no catalog. So actually it was in the air where I, the teacher can find courses, where the school can find courses that uh, they want to send the teachers. So it was actually a very great uh, period and that's why our uh, current annual conference here, uh, we suffered a lot from that because uh, we had a very uh, significant decrease in the amount of people, as you might see, uh, who received grants to come here. Uh, but luckily, um, with the support of the European Commission, now there is a new um, catalog introduced. It is still under development, so it's not not all the tools of this catalog are complete. But you can already, um, we for example, registered our upcoming annual conference in the catalog. Um, I don't know if we can. Should I go to the to the link to just quickly show where they can? But, well, it is there is a link, and you will receive also um, if you are really interested to receive this presentation that you did and me had during the uh, session for members, we'll be happy to share it with you. Uh, and uh, so here you can go to the tools section and there you can see all the courses you are interested in. So it's good that you can show to your school also this uh, catalog uh, and not only for yourself, also for your teachers in other fields that uh, you, you have subjects. And um, also here you can find partners for your projects. Well, of course, according to Rita, personal contacts are the best. Uh, but, of course, I mean, not all the associations have this opportunity, so you can also look who are the relevant partners. It's also in the tools section. And we, we, uh, in order to make it easier for you to understand this application procedure for Key Action 1 uh, for your school, we made a toolkit which is available in our website. So uh, you have the link here. Uh, also, you can find it in our website if you go to europe.eu. You will see in the, um, I think it is in international training section. Yeah, it stands on the right corner. Or, yeah, it depends from which part you look, but it's yeah, on the right corner. Um, and then there you can see actually which 
areas you can uh, point out in the application, or which priorities um, that can make your application be successful and you can come to attend our annual conferences. So I think I'll stop here. If you have any questions, I'm here. You have my email address. We'll be always happy to exchange more. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And thank you. Thanks. I just wanted to thank Ivan and update you on two small things related to this, which are key to understanding how we as a community can improve our position to Erasmus Plus. In the past, uh, there was a, the, in Brussels had something to say about these grants. Now, everything is with national agencies. So it's very important that you go back in your country and you figure out who is responsible in the national agency, and we really recommend you that you can actually just have a meeting with them, explain them that you exist as an association, complain about this stupid thing that schools have to apply for an individual's thing, and they have to make a whole European development plan just to attend one course that they immediately need for their teaching. So I'm just emphasizing, contact your national agency, and don't be afraid to be vocal about this. EU rules are not set in stone even though they're setting clay or something. It takes some years to change it. Yeah. We were not... With, there, there was another side of the story that was trying to get something opposite, which is a centralized course catalog. Quality control organizations like Europeo could highlight their course, and teachers all over Europe could say, that's a good course, and they can evaluate and go there. We're now in the middle somehow. I think there is a movement towards that, otherwise they wouldn't have made a new course catalog after already dismissing that schools don't need a catalog. So, the other thing I wanted to add there is that ISIL, representing Europeo, has been able already twice, once, but there's coming another session, to speak as the only NGO, civil society, course provider, at a session of the national agencies. So we're working our way in, and maybe next year we have a bit of another story, but for now, these things are here. Just one final thing, um, I've already heard that also when I attended this session for the national agencies and NGOs as well, is that sometimes national agencies require very weird uh, things, like that is not actually in the list of required things. If you come up with anything that you see that is not in, the, in, the, in this required list of applications, just also let us know because we, uh, we will also try to contact the national agency and kind of why they require this additional uh, documentation or information. So just let us know. <laughs> Thank you. I think we can then move to the final and quite important part of the slide. We have the sheets, we have the markers and all of that. Scheduling something, so yes. <laughs> just, just the time, the time schedule. Uh, okay, so finally, it's time for uh, for discussion and uh, getting your input on the, the presentation that Jonathan and Stephen held about membership fees. Um, what we will do for the coming about half an hour is we'll make I think three groups. You can make them yourselves. So find some people you can talk with and want to discuss with. And all three groups will um, discuss these four questions. What are characteristics of good membership fee system? Uh, which existing new benefits, if any, should be reserved for members only? What difference should there be between individuals and associations? And finally, how can members contribute to Europe besides instead of paying membership fees? So you could pick the topic that's most interesting for you and try to discuss all four. You also can choose for one or two of these if you have a half an hour input for that. Uh, there will be uh, flip overs on uh, several tables where you can sit. We have several big tables. Um, you could also find another place than this room if you want to, but be sure, not too far, to be back around five minutes past 12 and we will have plenary feedback on these questions. Now that I'm about to be back in show my you know. Good.
Okay, let's devote the last 15 minutes or so to the feedback. <laughs> from the groups, so which means as we've only got like, as I'm talking 40 minutes left, maybe we could do it in a very uh, restrained fashion, say like three minutes or so per group, so that we can take the feedback from your posters. And I see that, thank you, Paolo. Take it back to the secretary and the board meeting, so that can be worked on with. So, May I ask the representatives of each group to give the feedback? Sammy, you're standing up already. Does that mean you want to start? That would be nice. Let's yeah, just hand over the Okay, so let's just come here. Yeah? Actually, in our group, we basically discussed three points. One is all our, all of our group members believe that uh, members should pay, pay money to Europe to be given in a small amount because it shows the evidence of commitment uh, of members to Europe to and also even if small amounts of money it gives associations also to Europe to to lead them to spend some money on uh, something not uh, written in the let's say projects or something like that so it is necessary to, to have a membership fee uh, but uh, we discussed that some uh, some associated members are more active than full members. So maybe we should discuss the, whether do we need to have a, a sharp distinction between associated members and full members. For instance, associate members associated members cannot work for the General Assembly. Even they are very active. So maybe for coming uh, meetings we should, uh, Europe, as a European, we should discuss that associated members also can have more rights, or, or maybe even they can work during the uh, assembly, so we should be considered. The main main thing we discussed uh, in our group that uh, a European need to have a marketing, marketing plan about the benefits of being members, because for some countries or for some members or for some associations or some individuals, it, it's not clear what's the value of being a member of EuroClear. And there, there is a communication problem between EuroClear and some uh, countries or some associations. Or even some inside of some associations there is uh, problems of communication about the uh, value of being a member of uh, EuroClear. So that's why uh, EuroClear should have a plan or, uh, to uh, to explain the value of uh, membership to individuals and to associations. And after this, uh, we believe that uh, most uh, associations will be more willing to pay their uh, membership fees. So it was, the, yeah, it was the general, I think it was the general things we discussed in the group. Something else, I forget. Or is it? I, I covered everything? Yeah? Okay. Thank you for the contribution of the work. Thank you. So, we raised four or five points. First one is that uh, it could be necessary uh, to reward uh, active membership. Uh, and uh, we don't know exactly how, but uh, it could be possible to, for example, connect the exemption uh, of, of, of the fee payment to an active membership uh, association in, 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 in a country with uh, uh, financial uh, bad, uh, bad situation. Uh, the second point is that we think that there is room and opportunity for individuals to join without any particular benefit because uh, also the association are here because, because we share uh, some values and some, some aims and some goals. We are not here exactly to, to, to gain something uh, material. Uh, the third point is that financial contributions uh, have to be linked to, to capacities. Uh, the fourth point is that it could be possible, but perhaps uh, uh, it, it should be, that uh, voting procedures are also, uh, will be also online. 
And uh, the, the last point is that voting should be linked to uh, the paid and membership. Mm -hmm. and nowadays, unless we uh, uh, be able to, to, to find out our objective uh, criteria. That's not the case now. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh. We actually, well, we actually asked at first to do the reporting. He was very active. <laughs> or to the work. Yes. Yeah, we also made a few uh, comments. And uh, actually, we went through only the first question because we did not have enough time. But uh, basically, uh, there are also four moments but to highlight. Uh, first, uh, first of all, it would be a review the list of criteria. And uh, uh, this would be uh, our first uh, recommendation. We didn't come up with a concrete solution, but in the same time, we know that it would be good to review and probably uh, think of uh, uh, adding other criteria. From my side, uh, it was uh, uh, option that uh, it, uh, in an account we could take activity uh, and uh, as well uh, in our group uh, uh, we had uh, uh, that uh, it would be as well uh, teacher's salary. Yeah, so the, those two moments. Uh, another one big discussion we had on uh, question pay or not to pay. So this, this big, big <laughs>